Yeah. Right, guys? We are live now. Or getting 
newt, sorry, uh, then you're going to probably uh, be able to live a much longer time. And not only in terms of uh, the biological, uh, well, the, the, obviously the chron chron chronological age is important, but more importantly is that you, know, you don't want to be living like a 100-year-old for 100 years. You want to live like a 25-year-old or whatever you want to dollar your age down to, you can then live in that age group with that kind of fresh mind because we can already regrow brain cells, we can use uh, CRISPR technology, stem cell technology to basically reboot the brain. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you basically have potential eternal youth. Um, I think in the next, I would say in the next 20 years uh, or probably less than that. So, now, I thought this is the best way to do this is just to provide a blueprint of what I've learned over the years from these noted authorities and also the journal on articles I read. Um, so this has been, an, like I said, made available. Um, there's not enough time to go through every little detail because there's a lot of, there's a lot of information. Uh, but I'll just go through the highlights here. Um, so the first thing is uh, when I wake up, I, I uh, fix myself. Uh, the first thing is uh, magnesium, all the different compounds of magnesium. And uh, it's just a uh, good all around uh, tonic um, because it, it's, as you can see, it helps on in so many ways. Um, it's also very relaxing, it helps one focus. Um, it's a lot better than caffeine uh, in, in, in that term. Uh, I also take it before I go to bed because it's really good for regulating sleep. Uh, and uh, I think. That's been my big challenge: is how do we biohack sleep? That's the hardest thing to biohack because you know it's so fundamental to to who we are. And uh, unless you're the lucky four percent who really only needs less than five hours of sleep a night because you have a genetic advantage, um, you really need I'd say seven to nine hours, depending on what your preference is. Um, and it, I, I have so many friends who just they think that they they get on with five or six. Uh, but not all of them can be uh, part of that four percentile group, um, and you know it's eventually going to catch up. Uh, but you can do things if you're getting less sleep than than the optimal amount. There's a lot of things you can do to biohack it, uh, where you're not uh, really costing your system, um, you're not costing health consequences. Uh, the next thing is res resveratrol, quercetin. Uh, these are all the um, methylators, uh, and they all uh, slow the aging clock. Um, so it's important to take them with uh, any sort of fat uh, or a ketone ester. Um, the ketone esters, uh, these induce ketosis, so if you're looking to lose weight, uh, you can kind of jumpstart your ketosis, and uh, you don't have to go on a full-on keto diet. Uh, the ketone esters kind of are a nice little cheat, so I kind of, I, I've done all these different types of uh, diets over the years, just to experiment to see how I, how they agreed with me, and I found that uh, a really nice meet middle point is to have the ketone esters every day, and then it's also good for the brain and for focus, uh, but you can also um, have your carbs. You don't have to stick to under 20 grams of carbs a day for many, many, many days. I find that's quite difficult to do, and uh, if you're very active, you want a carb re refeed anyway, so um, that's a nice little trick. The, uh, the ketone esters, that's kind of a recent thing. I think in the last year, um, they found how, how useful uh, it can be. And then the NMN, that's what I talked about uh, earlier. Um, it's, that's, it's like a wonder, wonder substance. Um, but obviously, David Sinclair and his team and others now are, are working on how to further um, optimize uh, uh, this discovery. And uh, let's see, the la uh, cal calcium alpha ketoglutarate, um, that's something that uh, it uh, optimizes the epigenome and that activates uh, uh, the genes that uh, prevent the dysregulation and aging. So it kind of keeps your system very clean. Uh, and then uh, trying uh, methylglycine, um, again, yeah, multiple nice uses. It works quite well as a syner in synergy with NMN. So in the morning, I'm taking that as well. And uh, for uh, exercise, um, I'll get to the, there's more potions coming, but for exercise, uh, I think the best, some of the best things you can do, but you have to be fit, because uh, I wouldn't tell my dad to go ahead and start doing high intensity training uh, until he was at the gym and had worked up, up to it, because it's, uh, it's very uh, intense on the heart. Uh, basically, you're doing, uh, sprinting is one of the best things, or actually stairs, if you're in a tall building. 
Um, I used to do these uh, stairs, 10, 10 story stairs, go <coughs> straight up as fast as you can in a sprint, and you do a very, very light jog down. And, in, and you do, you know, I don't know, maybe four to six cycles of that, and it might only take you 10, 12 minutes. Um, and uh, yeah, you're exhausted, you're totally spent, but it, it's one of the, one of the best um, uh, ways to get that nice burst of mitochondria. Uh, and uh, you can feel the difference too. Uh, I mean, it's just mentally and physically, every, everything is just, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. But if you don't have access to stairs, it's just grass, pavement. Um, I think people in Tallinn, uh, whenever they see me and I'm by myself, I'm always sprinting somewhere. So they always think I'm in a rush, um, but I just, like to maximize, you know, the, the benefit of, of uh, doing doing sprints when I can, um, and then uh, the other types of exercises for high intensity, the full bo whole body exercises like squats, deadlifts. Um, anyone can do push-ups anywhere. Um, planks. These are these are all good. Sometimes I do them in the sauna, so you can stack. Stacking is a is a thing that I'd love to do. So you're challenging your body that much further when you're in a hundred degree sauna and you're doing planks or push-ups. Uh, VO2 max, that's a different type of exercise, um, that's where you want to increase your endurance and uh, so basically you can do say fast uh, treadmill for four minutes straight or Stairmaster four minutes straight, then you do four minute recovery, you do four cycles of that, it takes less than half an hour. Uh, Tabatas are another, um, that will boost your anaerobic capacity, so that's 20 seconds intense, 10 seconds rest. You do four minutes total, and uh, there's different types of Tabata exercises. There's the beginner level, intermediate, and advanced, and you can just Google for, you know, to say Tabata exercises type. There's a ton of YouTube videos where, where these trainers will show you exactly how to do them properly. <clears throat> and then finally, the sauna. Um, infrared saunas, are, they're showing that the IR saunas are a little bit more advantageous than conventional saunas, but uh, if you don't have access to an infrared sauna, it doesn't matter, they're both great. Uh, and then uh, you, you do a, a cold shower, um, and I usually do, or an ice bath, I usually do two cycles of this. And again, you're, you'll, you'll just notice your, 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 your sleeping quality, your fo ability to focus, everything kind of goes more into alignment um, when you start uh, doing this regularly. Now, this, um, this is like eating techniques. Everyone knows intermittent uh, fasting, IF, and then OMAD is one meal a day. Um, and Sinclair found that uh, mice that intermittent fast, uh, where they, their eating window is eight hours, um, are a lot healthier than the ones that are eating you know, routinely, like the equivalent of three meals a day. Uh, but he found the mice that eat only two hours a day, two hour eating window, by far, were, were even healthy, healthier than the other mice that were eating uh, with an eight hour eating window. So. Uh, I try when left on my own, if I, which doesn't happen too much, but when I can, I will try to eat into that two eat hour eating window. So, and again, I, I'm not, uh, I, you, you get to, to where your insulin is so stable that there's no more hung, hunger spikes. So, uh, my first meal of the day would ideally be say, I'll get hungry around seven or eight night, and then I'll fix something and, and I'll have a two, two hour eating window, and it, and it works, uh, works quite nicely. Uh, you're basically um, uh, putting the nutrients into your body in such a small amount of time, it doesn't tax, it's like minimal taxation on your system. So, uh, and then of course uh, for, for weight, uh, people who want to like really slim down, it, it works like a charm. And you also go into ketosis a lot faster when you combine that sort of eating style with, with uh, ketone esters, so that's a great stack. If you do ketone esters in the morning and then you're eating in the evening and you have a two-hour eating window, I mean, you're, you're going to be in ketosis pretty fast. And so you're going to, you know, the fat like around here, the really stubborn fat, that, that tends to go flat um, pretty fast. Uh, all these eating strategies, Mediterranean, Paleo, Keto, um, they all have their strengths. But uh, interestingly, Naveen Jain, um, he's a, quite a noted... Uh, a tech guy, uh, he started a company called Biome in California. And what he found was the people who had the most balanced kind of diet uh, were the healthiest. They had the healthiest uh, microbiome profiles. Um, so his, his advice was, yeah, you can do these different strategies, Mediterranean, paleo, paleo, whatever, but you don't want to just stick to one strategy. You want to mix it up and you know, rotate, maybe rotate things in and out. 
um, to get the most uh, beneficial um, health profile. Um, now there's these uh, little tricks like uh, to reduce fat absorption before the meal. Uh, there's all these things you can do. Uh, I don't do all of them every single time, uh, but uh, I do you know a number of them because they're helpful. Uh, after the meal, you can also uh, take things like glycine. Um, and uh, if if you obviously a lot of people's uh, insulin levels um, are going to be pretty erratic, and which is normal for the average person. So um, when you're starting into these routines, you're going to find you're going to get hunger spikes, and it's going to make it really hard. To, to stick to an intermittent fasting um, program. But the way to stop hunger is through these apple cider vinegar, cinnamon, uh, ketone esters are amazing. I think uh, one of the most powerful things you can do because that's pretty much all you need on this list is ketone esters. You take that and uh, you will not be hungry. It'll stop your hunger and you won't be hungry for the next, at least the next few hours. And then you can do another cap if you want to keep, uh, you know, to, to lengthen your, um, your, uh, your 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 fasting period. Now this is uh, these are some other little tricks. Um, a lot of people have correctly said that if you know you're a vegan or vegetarian, you're eating all this uh, all these plants, uh, they have an actual defense mechanism and it tends to strip a lot of important minerals out of the body, which is, which is true. But the best way actually to counter that is to eat sprouts along with whatever you're eating because they actually prevent they all these all these uh, vegetables from stripping your minerals. So um, and I learned that uh, recently on um, the Big Greenfield show. He had this guy, the sprout world sprout expert. Uh, so it's fascinating um, to listen to this. So now I'm using all kinds of sprouts with everything I eat, and you know. They, Tastes fine, so uh, that works well. And, and it's interesting because when I eat a power salad, now I feel like I actually get a, that little bit extra boost. I don't know if it's a, a placebo effect, but I definitely feel like it's a little bit of an edge um, with the sprouts. Um, obviously, uh, sugars are poisons, so you try to minimize those. Uh, trans fats, um, anything white, white bread, white rice, uh, white pasta. Uh, anything polyunsaturated oils, which are everywhere, unfortunately, because they're cheap and restaurants use them and they're in all the baked goods and, and all the chips and, and things like that. So, um, you know, and then, yeah, milk, processed foods, those, these are things just to, to really minimize. Um, then you've got the smash fish, uh, and we're in a perfect part of the world for, for smash fish. So these are all the omega-3 fatty fish that uh, are really good uh, brain food. Uh, but one very, very nice uh, trick is to, the, the amount of omega-3s that pass through the blood-brain barrier when you eat salmon roe or trout roe or any, any kind of fish roe is something like an order of magnitude greater. So all you need is a, a tablespoon of salmon roe and, and you're getting more alpha uh, um, omega-3s than, than you would from eating, say, a huge salmon. So it's, it's quite convenient. I tend to use the salmon roe and, and, and lather it over, uh, over the salmon itself uh, when I'm eating. They, yeah, they go all together. Um, let's see, other things that slow aging would be tart berries. And we're in a, again, perfect part of the world for this um, with all the, uh, the, the nice wild berries that grow everywhere, the wild blueberries in the summer. Um, and actually, if you combine blueberries with cardamom, uh, that's one of the strongest anti-carcinogens out there. So uh, that's that is one of the things I do. It's a, uh, with with my meal. If it's whether it's one or two meals, um, I'll usually have uh, have a combination of that. Um, dark chocolate's a great dessert. Uh, I love you know 80 percent and above tastes great to me. Um, so again, it's nice. You, you don't want to. You need a, you need a, um, a strategy that you can stick with as a lifestyle. You know, so I have, a, I have a sweet tooth, but it's not a very sweet tooth, and the dark, dark chocolate works really well. Um, the green leafy vegetables, they have tons of the phytonutrients, um, broccoli, cauliflower, these are actually all, all very potent. Uh, whole lemons are one of the most uh, important things you can do, and you eat the skin and the seed, you eat everything. Uh, you don't even have to have a whole lemon, you can work up to it, but you know, I usually will do half a lemon uh, with a meal. And of course, it works great with salmon because of the lemon. But um, it, it just there's so much benefit to, to lemons. Um, I mean, the, the amount of protection and cleansing it does on the liver is immense, um, and boosts metabolism, so you get weight loss, collagen protection, uh, and then green tea. I drink green tea every day, all day, 
Um, I like the way it tastes, um, and you get the uh, EC, uh, EGCGs in there, so uh, it's just a nice habit. Um, and that said, there's nothing wrong with coffee. The coffee has a lot of great stuff, great uh, ingredients in it. Uh, it's just that uh, I know a lot of people get addicted to it, and you don't want to get into that zone. I'm, everyone's different. For me, I can do three cups maximum before I, I develop a, a, a dependence on it. Meaning, if I stop, all of a sudden I'll feel tired. So I learned a long time ago never exceed uh, three cups. And the other the thing with caffeine is that if you regulate it with theanine, then you don't get the jarring effect of caffeine and the come down. The theanine just moderates it out completely, which is. Again, that's why I really love uh, green tea, because it's got both components, the caffeine and uh, the theanine. Uh, there's a saying, health begins in the gut. And uh, so one of the, uh, the, the, the special biohacks, uh, Ben Greenfield, uh, his guest, uh, Joel, Joel Green, yeah, this, this guy, he's a doctor, he's just one of the most phenomenal minds in the space. And uh, again, you can Google for, for Ben Greenfield's uh, podcast with Joel Green. But one of his recipes is you combine red fennel powder, apple skins, and human milk oligosaccharides. Um, the HMOs you can get through Amazon, um, they're not actual human milk, but it's, a, it, it's basically the equivalent. So when you combine those, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful gut cleanse. So I tend to do that concoction probably two, uh, I'd say three or four times a week. It's easy to make. Um, and then uh, Joel Green's also got something called the Daisy Cutter. And he said, this is pretty uh, intense. Um, you just have green beans and protein for 24 hours. Uh, and that's it. And, and that apparently it just resets the gut. Uh, but he, that's, some, that's the sort of thing he says he might do maybe once every few months. And, you know, it's just good to know. Uh, and then you've got the pro and prebiotics, uh, kefir, sauerkraut, kraut, um, kimchi, pickles, all of that is all good. And, I love the way these things taste, so my fridge is always uh, stocked. <coughs> now, this is, yeah. again, uh, this, will, this is available, so it's probably hard to read from where you guys are sitting, but this is just, um, a, a lot of uh, good components that um, I, will, I will take uh, before I eat my first meal. And uh, they're... Each, each one of these components has been vetted by research journals um, across uh, often the U.S., but sometimes it could be in Scandinavian countries. But the important part is that uh, they've been peer-reviewed, and all the data is there, and it's not like mainstream press, which is a lot of bogus information. Um, and so all of this list is basically generated over the years uh, from my deep dives into these research articles and seeing for myself, okay, that makes sense, all this makes sense, so I'm going to add it to my regimen. Um, obviously, it might be difficult to, to be able to tell which component is helping the most or because there's so many components. Um, I mean, you can do an experiment and isolate each one and see how it affects you, but um, what I like is that the, everything's been vetted, so I feel you know, with confidence that uh, it's a strong list, and ultimately, when I'm doing these potions, I can feel the difference, um, and so... There's enough good components in here that are working with my, uh, my biochemistry. Um, you know, we got at the bottom there, berberine. That, that's uh, really good before food um, because it has the in insulin spike. Uh, it activates AMPK, and that's one of the key longevity pathways. Um, below that is CERT6 activator. You need to take that right before food as well. And that activates autophagy, which is like, um, your, your system's being cleaned up. Like when you have a hard drive and it stops being efficient, you need to defrag the hard drive while autophagy is like defragging your, your, whole, your, your microbiome. So it's optimizing your system. So you, you can induce autophagy all kinds of ways. One, one of the easiest ways is through intermittent fasting. Um, and, uh, and some of these things like the CERT6 activator can, can help boost the autophagy. Uh, yeah, that just... Just, just a CERT-6 activator uh, resulted in a 30% increase in the life expectancy of mice. Um, spermidine, that's another one, right after food. You take that right after, and that also is an uh, activator of autophagy. And this is the uh, third potion, which is right before bedtime, a few hours. Um, melatonin is... Uh, there's so many great uh, uses to, for mel melatonin, but it normalizes your sleep. 
And Dr. John Lawrence is uh, quite, quite a no noted authority on uh, melatonin. Zinc is also fantastic uh, overall, so I take that. Um, now, a long time ago, I was, uh, well, when I was a student at Berkeley, and it was a summer, and sometimes I would find myself in one of the library stacks reading different journal articles, and one I stumbled on, uh, long before the world even knew what uh, zinc lozenge, lozenge was and why they would, we would even use zinc for anything, uh, there was something, a research article published by um, Harvard Medical, and it showed uh, all these people who had uh, reduced the length of the common cold from the average of nine days down to two days. And I thought, this is amazing. This, this, is, this is incredible. Uh, what's going on? So they were taking elemental zinc to basically cut the cold short. And uh, so what I did was, I back in those days, you couldn't find zinc very easily. Uh, but there was a third, third shop in, in Berkeley, this weird health food shop that happened to have elemental zinc. And the next time I got a sore throat, because the average person gets sick to, you know, a couple times, two, three times a year, um, I immediately took it. It tasted horrible, like chalk, but the sore throat went away within an hour. I was actually just dead shocked. Like, how, how is this possible that it would be so effective so quickly? And uh, in the research article, the patients um, took another zinc. They took zinc every, I think it was eight, every two hours. So I just did that. I, I took zinc every two hours for, for, the, for the remaining of the day, and all the symptoms basically reversed out. So the cold lasted all of, I'd say, a day. <laughs> and uh, every time I started get, getting that telltale sign of a sore throat, I would just have zinc on hand. So basically, I saved myself a lot of pain and, and, and annoyance from you know, getting sick like everybody else um, through the use of zinc. And Dr. Eby actually did a study on all the different compounds of zinc and which ones are the most effective. And zinc acetate ionizes the most. So what happens is when you take zinc acetate, it ionizes and the zinc ions attach to the cold virus and strip it through. Basically, they, they make it inert and then they, you know, you, you, you excrete it out. Um, and it's much more effective than a lot of the zinc compounds on the market that should not even be sold because they, uh, they don't ionize at all. And uh, what's interesting is I, I had a great track record of not getting sick uh, until 2004 when I ran out of zinc and sent my friend to the front because I was he, he got me this zinc and I didn't realize who's I didn't know Jock Doctor E B or that zinc compounds make a difference so I took this zinc sore throat didn't go away I got worse it got worse and then all of a sudden you know I'm in bed with a standard you know flu cold whatever um, and then when I looked at the bottle it said like zinc I forget the name of the compound pocholinate somewhere whatever. And so I Googled, and that's when I learned that Dr. Eby had done this whole study on all these compounds. And the one I was taking doesn't ionize. That's why it didn't work at all. So uh, my track record was broken in 2004. Um, and I was able to get a whole thing of Dr. Eby's uh, cold cure. That, that was the name of it. And it's just these acetate tablets. Uh, and so those were great for many, many years. I actually went through the whole bottle. Um, and. I didn't get sick at all. I mean, it's basically, they, they said you're the inventor of the two hour cold because you, you get, you, the trick is you got to catch it right when you start to feel symptoms because that's when the virus is multiplying the fastest. And if you wait a night or a you know, day, you probably miss the window of opportunity to reverse it out. So by, uh, gosh, it was years later, I ran out and I went to the web to try to find zinc acetate and you couldn't find it anywhere. And not only that, the U.S. government had gone after this poor guy and said he was a fraud, a charlatan, all this nasty stuff. Wait a minute, this stuff works. So I actually found his email, got a hold of him. I said, I need a bottle. They don't seem to carry. They seem to have like ruined you, like throwing you on the bus. And he actually wrote back. He said, I'm done with the U.S. I don't live there anymore. You know, he was, he was so like naturally bitter. And the guy's like an old guy now. Uh, and I was, I was really uh, sad for the guy. I said, hey, if you ever want to reopen the case, I'll testify on your behalf. I know why your stuff works. I read your paper. I've got it right here. It's good science, you know. Um, but it, but see, this is a, he was a big threat to the common cold industry in the U.S., which is small billion dollar business. That's why they get him in. Um, and even today, it's very hard to find zinc acetate because any vendor that does sell it, there was one one vendor, a Swanson in the U.K. that was selling it. So I got myself a bottle, and then I thought, you know what? A few months later, you know what? I can get a second bottle just in case. Well. That vendor is gone. They, well, they don't sell it anymore. You can't, you can't find it. Um, it's, it's tough. And it's like, well, this is the stuff that works the best. 
And so this is stuff that's hardest to find. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, obviously for relaxation, because before you go to sleep, um, things like 5-HTP, theanine, uh, GABA, CBD, these are all very, very nice uh, for, for that purpose. Um, oh, and then we got, this is called the HAP bead. So I, it's more of a conversation piece, I think, than anything else. But uh, what, it, what it is, essentially, it uh, produces low uh, magnetic uh, fields, low frequency. And uh, it's been shown for ages. I mean, this is old technology uh, from the 80s, really, uh, that magnetic fields have an effect on biologic systems. And they interact with DNA uh, and proteins, such as receptors. So this device, basically, it's an app-driven device. And you can dial in what state you want in your to, 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 uh, to undergo. Um, and basically, there's uh, right, right now, it's on, um, it's on Creative Boost. But you can have, have it on at night, and you can set the time for eight hours, say, for melatonin. Uh, when you wake up, you can, uh, you can create caffeine and CBD. There's all these little blends and combinations. Uh, and what's also interesting about this device, because of course the first question is, what about placebo effect? Well, Ben Greenfield, of course, you know, he did a deep dive in all the research articles. And I actually I read the research articles because I don't trust anybody's interpretation, even, even if it's Ben Greenfield. I want to see for myself how the research was done. And uh, the, 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 the stats are great. Uh, essentially, 90% of people who use this device are able to identify exactly which program was being put into their brain. OK, that's, that's great. Statistical significance right there. That's huge. Uh, and 100% of people were able to identify if the, uh, the, the device was, uh, was actually on, sending something to the brain, or whether it was a dummy device. 100%, everyone felt, felt the difference. Um, so, and then, ten, by the way, the 10% who got the answer wrong typically um, were, were the programs that uh, overlapped, like uh, focus and alert. Those are two different programs. So you can see how the brain might uh, misinterpret one to the other. And then the other thing is NuCalm, and that's this device here. It's a little disc you put on your wrist. Um, basically, the brain has a sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, mode. So sympathetic is uh, high intensity, drive, focus, all of this. Parasympathetic is uh, relaxation, meditation. Um, and naturally, if your brain is always on you know, go, go mode, um, that can be very stressful. And that can produce problems. Uh, that's why it's always good to, to engage the parasympathetic and you know, slow down, do you know, even the 60 second meditation, just something, something to break, break the intensity. Um, and so what Nucom does is, Put the headphones on, blinders on, and you put. Uh, they, they have these tracks that uh, sync with this device, and it engages the parasympathetic part of the brain uh, when you're doing these programs. And it, it takes the power nap, the 20-minute power nap, to, to to new levels. I mean, it's it's like it's like sleeping for two or three hours. So if you missed sleep the night before, and that's generally when I use this, um, is if I got say less than five hours. Then during the day, uh, instead of a power nap, I'll, I'll do this. And you can dial in, the, the, there's different programs for what you're trying to achieve. Uh, but the, the big tell for me with this device was the HRV, the heart rate variability. That number is probably the most important metric for identifying the health of, a, of your system. So say athletes have very high HRV because they're very healthy, they're healthy lifestyle, healthy, healthy nutrition. Um, and you, you start at, uh, you can use the uh, arm, arm ring to measure your HRV. Uh, there's lots of devices that do this. So you, you have a baseline. And then you put one of these on and you start doing the new calm and you start doing this. And what you notice uh, with a new calm is that your HRV number will start drifting higher. Just, just if you isolate this, and there's actual articles, research articles that have been published that actually show all the tables and how people's HRV improved just through the use of the new calm device. So that to me was, okay, this is legitimate technology. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, essentially, you've got, uh, yeah, uh, selfishinvesting.com. This presentation will be available there. Um, and then it can also be reached on uh, Twitter, lots of coin, ASI investing. And let's see, 
Yeah, I actually thought this was fun because um, there were some people who saw these pictures and and they would get it backwards. They would they would <laughs> they would say uh, like, oh, this was this was this must have been taken so recently. And I'm thinking, no, that was almost 20 years ago, <laughs> and and vice versa. So um, there's two of these were taken, yeah, nearly nearly 20 years ago, and two were were quite recent, you know, within the last uh, year year and a half. And this is a fun picture. This is a picture taken of me uh, 30 years ago at Lawrence Berkeley Labs. And I had a beard. And, I, yeah. <laughs> so, and there's Len Seaborg, actually. Yeah, he's in the middle. The uh, Nobel word. But I just thought it was funny because uh, someone saw this picture because um, the uh, other co founder of the company we launched um, dug this up because he's a hound dog for this. And he, he had it in the office. And uh, then a friend came by the office. and. Uh, he showed her this picture, and, and just quickly she looked at it, and she's like, "Oh, you look different with a beard." But she didn't realize when the picture was taken. She thought it was sort of recent, so I don't know, thought, thought the whole thing was funny to say. You know, I did. I didn't want to tell her it's 30 years old. So, <laughs> but um, anyway, I, a lot to chew on, and uh, I'm ready for any kind of questions you guys have on anything that I've said or what I haven't said is, as you know, this whole space is, it's evolving really, really fast. And there are some findings that get flipped. And so I'm always uh, ready to flip with them because, again, there, you know, some, there's been some bad science out there. You know, they, they used to say that eggs were bad, eggs can cre you know, increase your cholesterol, all these things, but it's a lot more complicated than such a simplistic answer. And again, it also turns to your uh, microbiome. What uh, is healthy to one person might create inflammation in another. And that's why uh, Naveen Jain's um, uh, company in California, uh, Biome with a V, is so popular among CEOs and actors, entertainers, because they can feel the difference when they, when they do a blood test and they can see, okay, avoid these foods, but take these foods. And then every three months, they get a new blood draw because when you change your diet, your microbiome will change. It'll optimize. But then you don't want to stick to the same recipe because your microbiome will shift. So um, yeah, a lot of people have just said this has been like part of their lifestyle now in terms of maintaining like a, you know, as close to 100% uh, health and energy and focus as you can manage. So anyway. <laughs> So we start ruining the cycle before I actually get hungry, which is when I at 1 p.m. Am I ruining the cycle, the intermittent itself? Yeah, the butter will break the the fast because it's caloric. Mm -hmm. So uh, why is that uh, Dave Asprey promoting that method? So uh, well, it's a great method. Um, Asprey is really good at uh, making these uh, findings, and Bulletproof Coffee is it's a great product. Uh, and the way um, I mean, I, I use ghee. Cause yeah. But butter, ghee, that's all really good saturated fats. And um, generally what I'll do is when to, to break the eating window, sometimes mm -hmm. that's the perfect way to break the eating window. Um, otherwise, you know, if, if I want to do, if, if I want to do it perfectly, then I don't eat until I'm hungry, which is going to be seven or eight at night. Mm -hmm. And during the day, I'm drinking green tea, these potions, by the way, have virtually zero calories, so they're not, they will not, they actually not only don't break the fast, they induce autophagy. So the thing with autophagy is, is that when you break your fast, you end autophagy, it stops. But the potions actually enhance autophagy, so you're getting even more benefit from, from the cleanup um, when you're fasting. And uh, yeah, the bulletproof stuff is great. I, I love it, it tastes great. And all you have to do, tell people to just Google last three bulletproof, and just the science behind it and why it works. But not putting butter in the You can't use the butter because anything with yeah. uh, calories is going to break the fast. Okay. I think you can go, there's been this debate, but I think you can go up to like 10 or 20 calories and not break the fast. Which is a tiny bit. That's just a very small bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I just, I was pretty convinced that he was actually the only that they inside. He is. Who's the guy behind it? But at the same time, also intermittent fasting. So it's, maybe I was missing out. 
but yeah, he, he loves, he uses both in his lifestyle, mm -hmm. and so he can't be like drinking bulletproof coffee all day, otherwise there's no fast. And so my guess is that, because I've looked at some of his, his, his work, his publications, and my guess is that he's got a window where he's not drinking any bulletproof coffee. It's probably a 16-hour window. That, that's usually the comfort window for a lot of a lot of people, you know, to, to not be ingesting any calories. And then you've got an eight-hour eating window, which is, of course, fine for eating, doing whatever. And bulletproof's uh, really good. The, the, the saturated fats, oils, are really good for the brain. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the other thing is that when some people are eating, um, when they're when they're on certain diets that don't allow enough saturated fats, then they start to get cranky and they wonder why. And part of the crankiness is that they can't think as clearly or straight. Maybe they're in a mental fog and that creates stress. And yeah, obviously it's going to create crankiness too. So yeah. So one of the topics that I've seen people discuss in the longevity industry is alcohol and like the long-term impact it has on people. So I assume that you've kind of looked into this a bit yourself also. So I would uh, kind of like to hear your point of view, yeah. you know, like recreational drinking. And I'm sure there's uh, at least a few people in this audience yeah. to whom this is relevant too. We've had loads of um, discussion about this. Uh, and keep in mind that your DNA is a, a big uh, factor in this. So for the average person, based on journal studies, uh, okay, they looked at brains in terms of state of health, and they used uh, NFTs, not the kind you're thinking of, but <laughs> neurofibrillary tangles, and that's a sign of stress in the brain. So brains that go through a lot of stress have a lot of these NFTs. And they found that people who abstain from drinking completely have uh, quite a few more NFTs than people who are drinking one to three drinks a day. And I thought, okay, well the science behind that is that when, you're, when your alcohol is a, it's a relaxant, it induces parasympathetic state, all these good things happen from, from drinking some alcohol. Um, and therefore the brain has less stress. And uh, of course, it's tricky here, that quite, there, there's multi layers to this answer. Uh, I have some friends, and my mother included, they, they, their genetics are not set up for alcohol. So if my mom drinks half a glass of wine, she turns red in the face. And you know, she feels the effects hugely. Uh, my son, other friends that are like that as well. They should not be drinking one to three glasses a day because it's not going to agree with the system. Uh, they could do probably a sip, a micro sip, or something small, because that would probably be therapeutic for them without feeling the redness or the, you know, the, the, state of, the change in the state of mind. Um, it's just you got to know yourself, but most people are not in that category. So one to three drinks a day has been found to be uh, the most beneficial for, for the brain. Um, yeah, there, there, well, there was some other. Um, there's a few other things, components to this, to this uh, question that are that are pretty fascinating. The the other thing, of course, is D your DNA. If you have a history of alcoholism in your family, you're six times more likely to become an alcoholic if you're drinking. So for those people, I would not be recommending one to three drinks a day, again, because it's just the, the trade-off. Um, but I think you know people, you should, people should. The healthier one is, the more they know. Like if they are developing an addiction to something, you know, caffeine is like the most easy one because if you drink tons of coffee and you stop, then that day you're going to feel really tired and you're going to go, well, it's because I have a dependence, and then you, you, easy to kick the dependence. And after a few days, you reset. Fine. Um, and with alcohol, uh, from what I understand, I've never felt it myself, but there are people who start to feel that pull, that it's like a psych psychological and physical pull of, I gotta have a drink. And if you're in that category, that's the sign, okay, stop, cut it cut it off. Feynman, Richard Feynman, the noted, uh, notable, um, brilliant uh, Nobel uh, physicist from Caltech, he used to do these, uh, in his book, Shirley, or you must be joking, Mr. Feynman, he talks about going into bars to pick up women and stuff uh, near the university uh, as a young professor. And, uh, you know, he'd always buy girls drinks, he's drinking, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then he said doing this after, I don't know, maybe about a year, he got to a point where he uh, actually, he, something like the bar was closed, but he felt like he had to have a drink. Like for some reason, it was like, whoa, wait, I need to have, the drink was more important than, than, than the girls, the woman. And that freaked him out. In the book he talks, he said it was such a, a wake up call, he, he just cut, cut the alcohol, uh, 
like 90% just cut it out. You know, so then in future bar visits, you would only drink one glass, you know, not, not like several, but drink one thing, and then, you know, that was it. So he, you know, he had very keen uh, self-awareness. Uh, so. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. That's great. A short question and a longer one. So I have done this blood test myself. Why would you recommend to do it uh, once in three months or so? Yeah, the Naveen team and people who've done it have said in California, uh, you, you do the blood test every, ideally every three months, uh, probably for the first year, because your system's going to be pretty volatile and changing. Uh, and then you can probably space it out to like once every six months. Right, thanks. And the longest, longer one. So let's jump to sex. I'm curious about the amount of orgasms for longevity. And what is your expertise and knowledge? It's a pretty controversial topic. You know, I have been on both sides, so but it's going hard to say. So, and uh, I understand there is like uh, a lot of information, you know, but from scientific uh, side, are you aware of something? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, well, orgasms, there, there, was, um, there was a research article done years ago, and I remember being in the stacks, and it was interesting because they basically looked at um, human sex, sex drive. In, or yeah, in relation to orgasms, and they found that, um, and they, they did this study across, I think, thousands of, of people with, within each age, and they, it was like, a, the graph was interesting, uh, it was like, um, is there something to, to write on? Yeah. That's cool. Oh, okay. Yeah, basically, um, well, first of all, the, 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 the number of orgasms was not zero until, say, puberty, which was interesting. Uh, it had been hitting an average also. So obviously there's people who don't have any orgasm until they hit puberty. But if this is the, your timeline, it's age zero. And this is your frequency. One, two, three, four. And then that's like five plus. This is per, per day. So the, the graph is like, you know, basically around the zero point, but like this, kind of like this. So there was like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, just simply because uh, before puberty you can have dry orgasm. And then at puberty, what's funny was that the graph goes like this. And this is three. That's a fun case. The S curve, <laughs> the sexual S curve. And, and so, basically, 13, uh, on. so basically between 13 and 15, you're like, like right in this three to four times zone. By 16, it drops to like twice. By 18, you're basically at one and you're at one, this is on average, all the way out to like age 65. And uh, I thought, okay, well, again, it makes sense. Carl Sagan, the famous scientist, studied monkeys and bonobos and chimps, their sexuality, and he said this, uh, this curve is uh, very similar. Um, so obviously it's a measure of sexual health, sex drive, amount of testosterone. The older we get, the less testosterone we put out. And so obviously people's sex drive, on average, tends to drop. Uh, after their teen years, um, and then certainly 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, it's less and less and less, on average. Of course, everyone's different, but this is, this is an average, uh, average computation. So to, to, I think, I think at orgasms and quality and all of that is a really great uh, measure of, of your personal health, your physical, your physical health, but your, your psychological health too. Um, to, to an extent, I, 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 uh, it's, it's, I, I can't, you can't say that exactly because everyone is different and everyone sees you know, sex as unique and personal. So if you're, if a person's not having good orgasms, it doesn't mean that they're unhealthy. You just, it's maybe something else. Um, if they are, I would say it this way, if someone's having a lot of good, good orgasms, that's probably a good sign. <laughs> and if they have a very high sex drive, like my friend Peter, I think he's, 60, early 60s, 
And uh, he, he says that his sex drive is higher now than it's ever been before. He's very healthy, very healthy lifestyle. Uh, his relationship with his girlfriend has been ongoing for six, seven years. Um, I mean, it, it, it's a very great situation, so I think things are working very well for him. And, and that, he's kind of like a nice little benchmark that someone could use um, for, for at any age. And yeah, I think obviously when you eat, when you, well, if you eat the right foods, you can immediately feel like a boost. You know, yeah. your drive, your drive is going to go up. Contrast that to eating a lot of uh, polyunsaturated, like bags of Doritos, McDonald's burgers, and loads of sugar, sugary desserts. Your sex drive is definitely not going to be at where it was. It's going to dip because of all that stuff, the junk in your system. Um, so you can be your own kind of guinea pig to, to kind of suss out what, what's working best for you. And yeah, power salads are, can be pretty amazing that way. Obviously, high quality meats, things like that are, are good. Salmon, the smash fish. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious, what do you think about semen retention for longevity? Oh, yeah, there's a, been that debate. Um, I think that it's, it certainly works for, um, for, for, for storing energy. You know, if you, if you intentionally abstain for, it also depends on your sex drive. If you're very high sex drive and you abstain for a week, that, that's like impossible. <laughs> but it's, it's a storage of energy. It's certainly a storehouse. Or like think think about if like if you get sick and your sex drive drive goes to virtually zero and you're sick with the flu for like a, a week or two and then when you get better then your sex drive just spikes straight up because you you have all that uh, the, the, the 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 energy built up you know from refraining you know and so that uh, that these are little games people can play there's the other school of thought though that um, the, the more act orgasms a person has, yeah. the, the more um, youthful they, 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 they maintain because the system, mm -hmm. your system is just always cranking out um, okay. semen because it's like being taxed. But that, mm -hmm. from what I understand, that is actually, it's a sign of health and it's, it's healthy. It's not a bad thing. But yeah, you can, you can I think, do it both ways. It depends on the person as well. You know, I don't know what to do if you go check those monks and they do the semen retention and still have sex and don't orgasm and they say, well, it's good for like, awareness and for our longevity, you go on the other side. And so, I know what, where is the trusted source, but it's no idea. Right, it, it, there's a lot of other variables, so that complicates it because if someone's abstaining, I think there's, like I said, there's a lot of benefits to that. Um, but there's also the uh, yeah the counter argument of, of having you know many many orgasms and that's just keeping your system optimized. I think you could work it either way, and maybe it's like with with diet strategies, one size doesn't fit all, so you maybe mix it up, and that's probably how you're like in, in, in when you're when you're at the gym and you're doing weights. Uh, to optimize your weightlifting, you don't do the same routine every single time. You keep your body guessing. So you, in other words, that means when you're doing reps, you do different hand, like say pull-ups, you do different hand grips. But you also do different speeds. Like you could do a really slow speed up, and then really slow speed down, and, and, and it's time under tension there. And that's, you're getting a huge mitochondrial boost when you're doing something like that. Or push-ups, you could do really slow push-ups, whereas one push-up takes a minute. So you're 30 seconds up, 30 seconds down, and you're also on one of those um, those, uh, those those balls that you know you kind of have to balance, and and so that's putting extra strain on a lot of other muscles. So you're getting like the most out of that out of that exercise. So yeah, keeping the body guessing is I think uh, the, kind of one of the basic principles. And my guess is that when it comes to uh, orgasms, same kind of thing. Don't do like the same kind of routine over and over and over again. Just mix it up. I have a question about like how about like total abstinence or like total fasting for a prolonged period of time, like more than one week, two week, even a month. And like uh, uh, if you if you ever tried like to do that like long period of abstinence and 
like what's the effect and uh, about this thing like uh, is, isn't it like a, let's say you say placebo effect uh, or either like also like uh, mm, let's say addiction to this type of things like once you start assuming that uh, like on a regular basis like to me mm, what's good is to have like a kind of routine that I can implement but it doesn't add too many stuff you know like and like as, as long as you keep it simple it's better to me you know? but maybe like you can maybe optimize something as long as it doesn't become something that you just do it because like your mind feel that it's good doing it but you know like it's just like if it has like actual effect well okay let's we take um, long fasts. So they've shown that ideally, if you're fasting for three to five days, no calories, you are maximizing the, um, the, the level of autophagy in your system. So that's hugely beneficial, and um, it's a good practice to do that, let's say, once, every, ideally, if you could do that once every you know, three to six months. Uh, I personally find that it's really, really difficult for me to to go that long. It's I've done a seven-day fast and I felt amazing. And just you know, so that you're, there's so much benefit to it. So I would encourage everyone. Yeah, definitely. If you can do a three to five-day fast, go for it. But you don't need to do to do that kind of length um, because there's all these other biohacks that will still keep uh, your your. Uh, system in a state of autophagy. But but since like you say like to me the point is like self mastery. You know? Like so you push your body to some limits mm -hmm. and then like you you gain some power by doing it. So it's like autophagy starts like and this ketosis starts when it's like four or five days fasting let's say and then this huge benefit because like you're pushing your body to, to some limits oh. and, and then like your body starts to let's say, hack sure. his way to uh, a better level. Right, and then conventionally that's the case. But with the, with the biohacks like ketone esters, you can induce autophagy much, much faster. Also, these other, these other substances can also help induce autophagy generally by, by like the 12th hour of not eating, 12, 12th to 16th hour because you're using these, uh, these accelerants. And the accelerants don't have dependency issues or uh, there's no like downside issues to, to trying and making this, you know, a, a normal thing in your life. And, and again, the, the the best way is if you just stop doing this, um, how are you going to feel? And what's interesting is that a lot of these things are, have a permanent um, effect. There's uh, some things that I didn't talk about today, like bromantane. And uh, Ben Greenfield f first talked about it. That's one of the things he uses. So on Reddit, all the users were talking about it. They found that when they use it, bromantane is used for breaking. Um, uh, the cycle of, of uh, putting things off, procrastination, when you do unpleasant tasks or things. So I found that people found that when they were taking bromantane over a period of weeks, they were really optimized to get things done. But what was most interesting is when they stopped using it, their brain stayed in that higher state months later, and that's when they were they were so like surprised. Like it's a permanent effect, for permanent uh, improvement on the brain, as in a permanent neuroenhancer. So obviously I bought some, I tried it, I had to do taxes, that's so, you know, blah. so I got up, did Bromantane, and it was the easiest tax return I ever did. I, I mean, it made me motivated to just get through it and crunch through it and stay focused, and it was actually kind of fun, believe it or not. And so whenever I have to do something really unpleasant, I take a little bit of Bromantane. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I should just take it every day, like this guy was doing for the next three months, because you have a permanent change in your brain. But Again, um, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So for me, it's kind of like, hey, this is a nice little tool I have in my tool shed. Whenever I need that really nice boost, I know where to go. I'm going to take bromantane. And uh, you know, if there happens to be a string of t days or whatever, then I'll take it every day. But generally, uh, that's, that's not the case. And then you, your other question was about um, abstinence, yeah. sexual abstinence. So. Um, I, again, you know, I know I have a friend who, who practiced or tried experimenting this way, and um, he was quite a womanizer. <laughs> so for him to, his view was that when when you're with another person, you're giving part of your energy to the person. He hasn't been choosing very wisely, 
So he wanted to just stop the whole thing and be like pure for a number of months. And uh, there were benefits to that, certainly. But ultimately, he returned to his old ways, you know, because, again, I, I think there's benefits to, to all this, but maybe from a practical standpoint, abstinence is, um, it, it, it's quite difficult, and uh, it, the upside is not, not so great. It's not great enough that uh, it's easy to just maintain as a lifestyle, if I'm, like on a regular. So I, it comes to, down to the person again. Um, number of variables. So I, I find that guinea, pig, guinea pigging myself works works really well for all the all sorts of these things. This bro one thing you find uh, uh, science.bio is the website. Okay. So science.bio has hundreds and hundreds of these compounds that are legal. And uh, I go to the Reddit boards and they have some other boards and you can see personal experiences with all these different substances. Uh, but I like uh, Ben Greenfield did the vetting, and so there's um, there's a few things that he takes re regularly now, and that's one of them. Uh, I don't I don't think he takes it every day, but uh, it's just it, it's a nice boost if you if you need it. Okay, I have another question that is a bit out of topic. Like, what's one one fundamental strategy, something like that, like mm -hmm. fundamental strategy that you use like in self fish investing? Oh yeah, that's uh, it's combining fundamentals and technicals. That's all it is. Okay. So you have the technicals, which are the charts, the time your entries and exits, and then you have the fundamentals, which are what the company does, how disruptive they are, the team, the effect effectiveness of the team, their track record um, with stocks, with sales, earnings, or acceleration, uh, return on equity, and then with crypto, it's uh, you know just generally milestones and white paper. How, how many uh, connections they have, how many people are supporting, how many major investors do they have under the belt. Um, yeah, you can get pretty pretty interesting because you can, because the internet is everyone, people are accessible, so you can actually get a hold of like key people of these different companies and you can um, pit them, put them in a ring, like a boxing ring together, and you just, you know, you write one and you'll say, well, this company does this better than you, can you defend yourself? And they always will. And then, it's like a ping pong match, tennis match. So I take their answer and I put it to that company. And that company defends themselves and it goes back and forth. And you can find oh, quite a bit of truth that way. Uh, certainly better above and beyond what you would see in, in like mainstream press. I think, uh, what do you take on water? Uh, dry testing, for example, while I'm doing intermittent testing, right? And water itself. So you know there are different gadgets. For example, I have tried melted water. So they say it's a live water, a lively water of some English, right? So and the water that makes you DNA do something. What's your take on that in general? Water, yeah, water um, okay, and dry testing of water. Okay, so the first there there's the belief that everyone should drink eight glasses of water a day if they're not uh, active, if they're just living a normal life, which is not really necessary. Water is great. Fantastic, but you don't need to drink that much. I mean you'll go to the bathroom a lot. And yeah. You're not really getting any that much added benefit. You just need to stay hydrated. That's it. You never want to get to the point where you're thirsty because then you're already way over the line. So I find that drinking green tea throughout the day, I'm never thirsty. You know, and whatever it is, you know, tea it doesn't have to be green tea. Green tea just has that added, added benefit of um, high level of uh, EGCGs. Um, now the water industry, there's a lot of mm, charlatans out there. So there's a lot of like these ideas put forth. Oh, if you drink this kind of water. This is infused. Yeah. There's, there's not a scientific verification to a lot of these claims. So if there's no research articles backing up their statement, then to me it's meaningless. Well, you know, this, uh, they have those gadgets, like my mom has uh, ionizators for water. Yeah. You know something? You yeah, again, sure. uh, I mean, you want to you want to distill the water. Distilling water is good because uh, a lot of places have. Uh, impurities, heavy metals, and things, and then that just leaches all that out. So this, this still, you know, filters. Filters are great to have, but uh, there were some. I don't know if you if you shot some ideas, water ideas. There's a lot of things that have been sold that yeah. don't have uh, good science backing. So to me, well, it's like, hey, that's there's no evidence here. It's just a place that can make uh, extra money off mm -hmm. off people. Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's all so many of the, these things that I talked about today have so much more of a health impact um, than 
well, yeah, if, if there was a water, some kind of water that was so great, like some of the claims, everyone would be talking about it. And then a guy like Ben Greenfield would have already done a deep dive into it and interviewed the inventor of whatever the, this miracle water is, mm -hmm. and then there would have been research backing and everything. And then I would probably be drinking it then. Yeah, and so. also opinion on dry fasting. Dry? Dry fasting or fasting without drinking water. No, you definitely, definitely drink water. <laughs> drink, keep yourself hydrated when you're on a fast. That's extremely important. It's very, if you're doing a dry fast, there's so, so much downside to, to that. Yeah, now you always keep yourself hydrated. So what, while I'm doing fasting, should I drink my water, let say, with something, like this potassium or yes. salt? Or yes, yes, yes. Very, it's, it's great to have a, a mineral infused water. Mm -hmm. Well, you can drink water, normal water, but uh, then you have magnesium tablets, potassium on the side. These are very important minerals. So I use um, uh, potassium uh, bicarbonate. It's not sodium bicarbonate, but it's potassium bicarbonate. So it's kind of like a cheat because I don't want the chlorides, I don't want the salt content. Mm -hmm. So I find that works really well. Just to, and I, I take that in, in one of my potions, in, in the, uh, the potion before before my first meal. Mm -hmm. So that, that just ensures that I'm, I'm, I've got plenty of potassium. I'm taking magnesium when I wake up and when I go to bed, so that's covered. There's different quality of magnesium, or different compounds of magnesium, and the one I take when I wake up is just, um, I think it's got like five different types of magnesium with the compounds. So and my last question is on sleep. Like you tried different cell cycles, so cycles of sleep, as you told me, remember? Like. So there, uh, you wrote five hours minimum. But let's say it's no, you need uh, really seven minimum. All right, so let's say do this like uh, the wind sheet or like uh, that's something. That's when I I, I sleep uh, three hours yeah. typically. Um, so if I go to bed at one thirty, I wake up at four thirty or five, or give or take an hour. Yeah. And uh, just wake up naturally, and I go on my phone because there's everything's on there. Mm -hmm. you can look at crypto, look at emails, everything that's built up. I work for a couple hours, and then I usually get sleepy again because three hours is not enough. And then I catch you know the rest on the back end. And what I find is on the back end, if I get four, so that's a total of seven, I can't sleep anymore. I'm totally. You can also feel you know from uh, like morning erection and all that. Mm -hmm. Everything is. It's a good sleep, mm -hmm. so there's no point in sleeping anymore. So my sleeping has gotten more efficient somehow by, by sleeping in this breaking pattern, as opposed to just like sleeping, what, I, what it used to be for me for the longest time was nine hours, That's, that was my ideal. You go to bed, you wake up nine hours later, and, and you slept really well. But that's nine, that's nine hours, it's a long time. And somehow with crypto in 2020, when it really started to go, um, after everything bottomed out, my whole sleep cycle for the first time in my life switched to this waking up after like two sleep cycles, after like three hours. And it stayed with me more or less the same. The only thing that, that disrupted it oddly was COVID. When I recovered from COVID, which was like a mild flu, I was getting two hours of sleep a night for like 10 days. And I couldn't sleep any more than two hours. It was really weird. It's like my sleep cycles were all compressed. And I thought, well, if this was engineered, which I think it was, they, it's not all bad. They must have created some kind of sleep uh, weaponry in here so that you know the, the Chinese only need to sleep two hours a night. <laughs> so yeah, no. It's, it, unfortunately, after ten days, my sleep cycle returned back to the normal uh, sleeping in cycles. So I, to this day now, I I guess six to seven. Seven is optimal for me. But beyond cutting the sleeping time, have you felt any benefits? This schedule. I wouldn't say my sleep is better than sleeping nine hours solid, but it's not worse. So I save I save two hours. So that's the benefit. Mm -hmm. And the other benefit is also um, if you if I'm asleep for nine hours, the crypto market, so much stuff could happen in that nine hours. <laughs> so it's nice to be able to to break it break it down like that. Well, I know just like in terms of productivity hacks, right? If I wake up at four. I want to create or do something like this. So if I have those, like, uh, let's say, breaking sleep cycles, you know, I can kind of manage my schedule and be more productive. So, you know, so Your I brain is really it. clean also yeah. when, when you wake up after two, or my, this is my experience, I wake up, say, 4.30 in the morning or 5 in the morning, and you're, it's everything's so quiet and your brain is super clean. Mm -hmm. It's Even though you haven't slept a full, a full night's rest, but your brain is still in this, like, really nice state. I find that uh, like I can 
my writing, my qual the quality of my work is really a, 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 almost like I got a full night's rest, you know, because the, the mind is the best in the morning when you're, you know, waking up the first few hours. They always say, do your hardest tasks the first few hours of the day. And so I find that that window in the middle of the night is kind of equivalent to that. So the two hours that I'm working, it's, it's really nice because everything's just flowing and my processing of information is really fast as well. And eventually the brain gets tired and then I go back to sleep. If I introduce a sleeping schedule, like, uh, when will you come in to take the pills, uh, uh, like all this stuff? Pre-sleep, after well, sleep? You do the, the potion number three is two, hour, two to four hours before you sleep. But if I sleep two hours, uh, three times a day, let's see. I would, I would break it down to where, uh, where wherever your first sleep is, mm -hmm. do, do the do potion three, that's this, you know, and then when you wake up after, like the next day in the morning or late morning or whatever, then then do potion number one at that point. Mm -hmm. Potion number two is before your first meal mm -hmm. or your second meal. If you're if you're eating two meals a day, then I would say do it, space it out so that potion one, two, and three are kind of like spaced by a few by a number of hours. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. And so talk about like disruptive. Uh, uh, routines, right? So like the, the, the brain, the body, the, it gets used to a certain like rhythm and so on. Same with nutrition. Uh, but then we all have like things that happen in life. Uh, how do you uh, rebalance your rhythm or prepare for it before? Like when it comes to uh, anything, like I mean sometimes maybe tomorrow we're going to hike and then we're going to walk like 31 kilometers. How do we prepare our like nutrition for that and how we just sink it back to, to its uh, to this thing, the same way with like sleep cycle or like, you mm -hmm, know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, things like uh, for sleep, I'll, this, this is a, it's a good, good question because there's a lot of answers to it um, that cover different bases, but let, let's start with sleep. So uh, the beauty of melatonin is that, let's say you're changing time zones, it's a great way to reset your time clock. So everyone should, but even if you're not changing time zones, it's just a good way to keep your sleep cycles um, regular. Um, if you're gonna, let's say you know you're gonna do this really big um, event, mm -hmm. like there's this walking event where you walk for like 100 miles, so you're really gonna tax your body. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you you are you know physically fit for it, and that you're you, you know you don't want to be in a state of ketosis going into something like that. You want to certainly carb load, you know, for something like that, so that you you have the uh, the stamina to take the whole thing. Um, and then also when, when you do that kind of uh, level of damage to the body, then you want to also make sure that you're taking plenty of anti antioxidants afterwards. Mm. Um, gut reset, gut uh, microbiome is really important. So prebiotics, probiotics, those things are very, very important. They're important all the time, but mm. you can do an added boost, I'd say, you know, if you're going to really stress your body like that. Mm. Um, what else? What are some other, the, the, the body likes to be taxed, that's why saunas mm -hmm. and cold showers work so well, but if you overtax, which is what you're really asking, then yeah, you have to be just mindful that you're gonna generate a lot of free radicals. Like if you're running a triathlon, you're, yeah, there's no way to avoid that, so you really need to make sure that your, your stack of what you're taking, you know, you can boost the, boost the amount you're taking before and after the event. Which in and what about like a sort of like a regular like taxing? So like every two weeks doing something. Either every two weeks you go to a hackathon, you don't sleep, or every two weeks you go to a yeah, I don't know, like, a rave, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, I mean, it, in in my life, I find I'm walking this tightrope, this sleep tightrope, to where I'm often sleep deprived, and so I'm using all these tricks to. But I also know that you can only do this for so long before there is going to be something consequential. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it, it's like, uh, if I did a, a, a number of nights of three to five hours a night, say three or four days of that, well, I'm definitely mindful that I've really strained my system, even with the biohacks, and then on the fifth night, I will just, or my body will literally, it'll, it'll say, you know what, we're going to sleep for 11 hours tonight. And you just do it, you let it go, you don't wake up. I never set the alarm if I can avoid it. I mm -hmm. schedule everything so it's definitely going to be after my waking hours. Mm -hmm. so. 
I was sleeping over, so. Uh, yeah, but that's a constant uh, challenge for me to, to, to balance that out. Yeah. And when it comes to nutrition, for instance, like let's say like the, you know, you're gonna do something, then you like hike on on uh, on protein or carbs or like even sugar, and then when you're going back to sort of like normal routine, you're you spike on on uh, on insulin or like you just got used to for like I don't know for one weekend of like uh, that stress uh, stress in the body. Now how do you go back into like baseline and so on? Do you have any techniques for that? Yeah, well, uh, carb, carb refeeds for keto diets are just a natural thing because then you don't have the carb crash. Mm -hmm. So you, you just be mindful of whatever whatever you're, you're sub subjecting yourself to. And then you don't want to, I mean, if you, if you, like, well, good example is Halloween. Like, I ate so much candy because I was just, just for, like, relive childhood and stuff. And then you just get that mm -hmm. sugar crash and you feel horrible and everything but you know the best way that is got reset doing all like a lot of the things I talked about there and and you know you're you're back to normal the next day um, yeah so uh, I, I see health as uh, it's a bank account so mm -hmm. you know the more all-nighters and the more sugar and more nasty you know whatever you're putting in your body uh, if you're drinking excessively all of that you know you're really withdrawing a lot of money out of the bank account mm -hmm. so you don't want to deplete it so yeah. Every chance I get, then I'm going to make sure that I'm doing the the one meal a day and doing all of these things, and then every day I'm depositing more money, so I'm repl replenishing the bank account. Uh, so now, following that uh, metaphor like of the bank account, it is really hard um, unless you're taking into account like accounting uh, like tracking or something. Uh, it's hard to measure what you put in your body and what you take out of your body, right? Uh, do you have any recommendations in terms of like tracking habits, uh, nutrition, and sleeps, or? Yeah, HRV monitor is great because then that's like your baseline. So whatever your number is, if you're going down, it's, it's something you're not doing something right, or you're not mm -hmm. doing enough of something that is healthy for you. So you want to make sure that number's stable, and then you can adjust whatever it is in your lifestyle uh, that will increase the number. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, the guys like Ben Greenfield and Seamland, and all they, they all are, you know, have their their monitors on them, uh, so that you know, I think that it's probably the most one of the most accurate gauges of your sure. overall health. So you know, and that's that at least keeps you within within all boundaries. <laughs> so, uh, do you have yeah. cheat dates? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Not all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone's got to kind of find their their rhythm for what works for them. And uh, I mean, I love to indulge in whatever it is, an all nighter because the party's good, or just lack of sleep, or uh, yeah, that. that uh, friend's birthday party, the cake was there so good, so I had three slices. <laughs> and then the next day when I weighed myself, I was like, oh, there's an extra kilo on it. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, really? and then, uh, but you know, that, that kilo comes off because in a, in a day and a half, because if you go back to your, you know, it's like, oh, I need to be making sure that I do, you know, extra discipline, you know, so back to my, my normal weight again. So, you know, this, it's, it, the scale is a really good tool because it gives you kind of like a boundary on it. What you're doing to, to to create a maybe slower metabolism or weight gain or something, and you know in my my case I tend to be a on the on the skinnier side, but you still can. It doesn't matter what your body type is. If you're abusing your body, you can certainly put put some unwanted uh, weight on very quickly. And the culprits actually are not just eating eating a lot of um, calories, but but the lack of sleep is probably the biggest culprit. So what I've noticed is, if I'm eating a ton of food and breaking all the rules, because I do that sometimes, like I said, I might have a cheat week, okay, not a cheat day, and then the, the weight gain just from that is pretty small, because my metabolism, it'll shoot, my weight will, will, will gain, but then it'll come back down, it'll just kind of, but it'll be overall a little bit higher, because I was eating so much. But if I don't get enough sleep, that's the worst, because then, I'm really putting on, the metabolism is slowing down by, by not sleeping sufficiently. So I always calculate that out too. I'm like, well, if I really want to have an indulgent day with food, 
I need to get sleep, then I can do that. Just by not eating and not sleeping goes well together. <laughs> yeah, you can, well, you can have the double whammy, right? <laughs> oh, and that's the other thing. If you don't get enough sleep, your insulin is not going to be as stable. You're going to hunger spike, and like the 4 a.m. feeding, like after a, a party or whatever, 4 or 5 a.m., you get this hunger spike, and the drinking spikes your insulin as well, so you want to eat food. So that's like a triple, triple whammy of too much drinking, 5 a.m. feeding, lack of sleep. Those three things there definitely cause... You know, I'm, I'm normally uh, about 72 kilograms, but, but that right there will easily add on like one, one or two if I did that for like an entire weekend. What's your take on blue light and sunlight? Hmm. Yeah, that's great. Uh, you gotta have lots of blue light during your waking hours. And then the red light, uh, like uh, the Juve, is probably the most powerful unit on the market and the most popular most tested, so a Juve unit is great for uh, for waking up. It's great for your skin, um, your hair, everything. Uh, Juve makes all these great products, um, and they're, they're pricey, but it's worth it because they, they last a long, long time. And uh, you know, guys like Ben Greenfield, they use it every day. I try to use mine every day if I if I if I have the time to do it. Usually, when I wake up, you know, looking at the phone, I'll I'll use the the unit uh, ten minute intervals for maybe twenty minutes. And it's really good because it, it's a great way to start the day because it's got uh, infrared in it and uh, it, it wakes you, it just helps the wake up process. But uh, you know, for the blue light, you don't want to really have much blue light within like the two, two to four hours before bed. You want to minimize blue light. You can do that with apps on your phone and on your laptop. So like the light that's coming through is going to be red light, mostly red light, so it doesn't trigger you know, an awakened state. And then what's sun? As the guy from California. Like, yeah, sun's amazing. Uh, now that we're going to get more of it, you know, getting getting that sunlight in the first few hours of the day is a really great way to keep your sleep cycle uh, regular. But there, of course, can be too much sun, right? And stuff, so yeah, well, the sunlight is, is extremely important because it generates vitamin D, and you don't want sunblock. Unless you really are going into here in the desert climate or something, Saudi Arabia, then yeah, you gotta protect your skin. But around here, it's great. We don't, we have the luxury. We don't really need sun sunblock. You can have a lot of sun. It also depends on your, if you're if you're blue eyed, fair skin, you're more sensitive to the sun, then you might need sunblock. So it, it really depends on the person. But generally speaking, just be mindful. Wear wear a cap, sleeves, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's better than using sunblock if you can avoid using sunblock at all. Mm -hmm. And breathing also you didn't uh, mention it. So breathing, breathing. breathing. Oh, so breath work, yeah. Breathing itself. It's not maybe even breath work, but let's come back to this metaphor of bank. There is also like this idea that well, there is a bank of breaths. So, like, yeah, absolutely. You have to slow down your tempo, right, to have more bank left, the left and back. Yep, so that, that's a uh, breath. Ben Greenfield calls it breath work. You can do this all the time when you're walking. You can have a meditation walk where you're you're counting the steps where you're holding your breath, yeah, yeah, yeah. like 30 steps, and then you breathe in. Yeah. Uh, there's the Wim Hof technique, which is yeah. miraculous. It's amazing. Um, it, it's just for like optimizing your brain. It, it takes 11 minutes. It's a YouTube video that he that he has out, there, and he just walks you through the 11 minute session. Mm -hmm. uh, just breathing through your nose is extremely important. Um, when when I'm when I'm writing or composing music or whatever, I I always make sure I'm breathing through my nose. You just feel the difference. You're, it's stimulating the brain as opposed to breathing through your mouth. And there was a study done where if a person uh, intentionally breathes through their mouth for like a week, it creates a lot of problems, brain problems. <laughs> it can, it can it, it, as opposed to breathing through the nose. So I, there, for sleeping, there's these things that um, keep your mouth shut. It's like a little piece of tape so that uh, you're not breathing through your mouth when you sleep. They're like these little strips. So I have those, but I pretty much train myself not to breathe through my mouth. So I don't really need them anymore. But they're just things to keep in mind. Bre breath work is great for like sauna, for cold, for uh, the cold bath. Ben Greenfield loves the box breathing, breathing technique, which is you breathe in for four seconds, hold for four seconds, exhale for four seconds. 
hold for four seconds. It's just you do this, and what I find is that your brain is mindful of the counts, so it's not thinking about the cold. So it works really well for well, it works well for saunas, especially if you're in a really hot sauna, just because it takes your mind away from from your environment, and it, it can be meditative. But there's lots of breath breathing techniques, uh, but they're very useful. Yeah, I mean, the, when I had uh, COVID on the uh, fifth day, I um, when I was had a big bounce back. Um, I thought of, ben, of, of Wim Hof, and so that's how I found this video. And it was really like five in the morning or something, so I did his breathing technique. And that background fatigue I had since it started for the five days, it just vanished. And I thought, okay, well, it's probably a temporary vanish. Well, no, it never came back. But fatigue, he just zapped with his fatigue away completely. And then, well, by the sixth day, I was, I was almost all well again. So, with apps. Yeah, that was a crazy <laughs> thing. I, yeah, I went from 73 to uh, 67 and a half kilos in four days, even though I was eating like normally, like I normally would. Um, so it was bizarre. I, I, I mean, at first I was a little alarmed, and then uh, Axel was saying, well, no, it makes sense. Your immune system was taxed by something new for the first time, so I probably had to work 24/7. That's why you burned off all the calories. So yeah, this is great. What a little benefit. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about people who want to build muscle or um, put on some mass? Mm -hmm. So how is this uh, longevity thing um, can benefit them, or what's your take on this? Yeah. For for uh, generating mass. Um, the best way to do that, uh, Mike Menser, uh, he had these amazing techniques. He, he's the guy who trained up all these Olympic athletes into, into gold medals many times in his career. And he himself was, I think, a gold medalist. Huge guy. And what he said um, was that that every body type's different. So if you're like, um, what is it, a, a mesomorph, you can gain mass, muscle mass very easily. Just doing a normal like gym workout, you'll, you'll gain quite a bit. If you are an ectomorph, I'm more of an ectomorph on the skinny side, I found that gaining muscle is just not part of my DNA. I'm strong, I'm usually strong for the muscle size, but I just can't get a, I can't, I'm never gonna be a big guy, no matter what. And what he found though was, if I wanted to be a big guy, and, and I tried this technique years ago when I wanted to be a bigger guy, right now I like this, but I did get noticeably bigger in pictures from years ago. And the way to do it, what he found it was the, the least intuitive thing. He took this really skinny guy and he said, this is what we're going to do because nothing's working so far. You're going to come into the gym once a week and work out for 20 minutes and that's it. But the 20 minutes are really, really intense where you're ripping the muscle. What he found was the ectomorph body type takes a long time to, to heal. The, the healing process is so long, he found that seven days was optimal. And this skinny guy got big by doing 20 minutes every week for six months. It was like a massive transformation. So that I tried it. I, I remember I was in Ibiza, and I was in the middle of this program of 20 minutes once a week. And the picture, there's a picture of me leaning, and, and people are like, God, is that you? I, and I was like, yeah, it was the Mensa technique. So that, that would be my advice. I mean, you look like you're more on the skinnier, slender side. So if you wanted to get big, you probably need to space out your intense workouts by more and more. Try like spacing out by three days, four days, five days, see, see what works best. But the 20 minutes when you are doing a mentor technique, you're ripping the muscles, meaning it's a, it's very you know, high intensity <laughs> like training. So that will, like the next two, three, four days, you should be sore. Right, well, there's like this belief that if these uh, people consume lots and lots of protein, they will cut off their longevity by this um, process. So if they want to build muscle and still have this longevity benefits, can they have both? Yeah, so that is the ar argument about uh, amino acids and mTOR. So you take all these aminos and it triggers mTOR and that can cut your, yeah, can reduce your lung, your, your lifespan because you're you're just overloading yourself with, with proteins and, and, and aminos for muscle gain. Um, and that's, that's actually, it's been shown that that is kind of the, the trade-off. So if you want to be really be big, with all the, you know, then you are. It comes at a price. However, there are there's so much knowledge, more knowledge today than back then. So uh, 
if you want to get big muscle, again, you can come back to the Menser technique, which will still build muscle. You just have to space the workouts by more and more time, which, which again, that was the most, uh, it was strange. It was so, so groundbreaking at the time, because who would have thought you work out less and you get bigger from working out less? Because the muscle needs time to, to, to heal. And with ectomorphs, like myself, it, uh, I need a lot, a lot of time. I found that one week was actually ideal. I just followed the prescription. And, so it takes virtually no time, but you end up gaining, gaining mass, gaining muscle. Do you work out regularly? Yeah, I don't want to be as that big. Um, that was some years ago, and I, you know, it was kind of cool to see the, the system work. But I actually like, like more like this when I am now. I, it feels good and everything. Uh, so you know, my workout routine is typically 20 to 30 minutes, uh, high intensity, but not like on the men's level. I, I don't want to put myself through like that kind of uh, where you're, you're generating so many free radicals. I don't need. I don't. I'm not looking to be. You know, for that soreness and, and, and that kind of uh, bulk. So I like. It's kind of a combination between cardio and high intensity. 20 to 30 minutes every other day. It's nice. You know, and then I do my sprints as well because the sprints uh, help uh, the metabolism. So it keeps keeps the, the the white fat to a minimum. Um, the cold, the cold baths, cold showers that generates brown fat, which is actually um, brown fat is is going to increase your metabolism and it eats away at the white fat. So you want brown fat in your system. And a guy like Ben Greenfield, what he does is he'll, he'll he said for the for the person who's not who doesn't have a cold bath or anything, you just shower 20 seconds cold, as cold as you can get it, 10 seconds hot, and you alternate for five minutes. And that alternate uh, alternation creates uh, brown fat naturally in your body. All right, thank you. Sure. Have you tried the uh, pressure chambers? Like uh, this is Israeli study that was about uh, like the uh, 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 had it in the presentation. The hyperbaric uh, chambers. Um, yeah, like for dying sickness, we mm -hmm. can make your cells. Uh, um, renew themselves more faster. That is in the first pages where you have the nutrients. That, um, yeah, it was there in the Hyper, hyperbaric. Um, you didn't mention about the chambers. It's like even in Thailand, there's one place that we can uh, go to this dining sickness uh, chambers. Which basically gives you a uh, higher pressure what you have like in the bottom of the ocean. Supposedly there was an uh, like not even supposedly there was an Israeli study done that if uh, uh, you to you twenty five percent of cells. Something like tetra, um tetra and uh I'm I'm uh, just so telomeres, yeah. Yeah, luckily, then you want to. So it's an extensive telomere, so also it's a chamber, uh, like a pressure chamber, um, like sleeping, basically. I've heard of, I've heard of these devices, but I don't really uh, know enough to say. Um, okay. I, I, again, I don't I don't know if they're um, going to be that impactful compared to some of these other techniques because I think they've been around for a while, but uh, I haven't heard anything like anyone shout at the top of their lungs that this is a great. It's like cryogenic chambers, not never going to be as effective as going into an ice bath. Because the cryogenic, it, it's air, so your your body is not going to be as taxed within a cryogenic chamber as it is in even like a cold shower. So how are you going to get the needle tied in the And a man, I would I would uh, say there's a lot of. Um, a lot of this is sold online, like on Amazon, but a lot of the manufacturers um, don't have a certificate of authenticity. Uh, but they don't have like an NMR plot with a, you know, showing that it, the concentration yeah, is exactly what they're claiming. Site, There's one site that I would say uh, is the best site. It's do not age org, and they have not just NMN, and also the best price points too. They think they're doing so much volume, <laughs> but they've had the uh, excellent reputation. Um, so. I have my parents buying from them. I use their, their products. And also on there, you can get some of these other things I, I mentioned, like the uh, uh, calcium, uh, AKG, uh, the spermidine, those things are all. 
and there, the guy who runs it is um, he's always staying on cutting edge. So as they make new discoveries, he'll add the products to his website. All right. Well, thanks yeah. for coming. It's yeah. been nice. Yeah. Yeah, guys, uh,